Uh, the balance of payments is a document which records all the flows of money in and out of a country during one year. And thanks to the balance of payments, we can see whether more money is flowing into a country or more money is flowing out of a country, and it gives us an indication of the competitiveness of that country. And the balance of payments is split between two accounts, the current account and the capital account, and all flows of money in and out of the country are recorded in one part of the, of the balance of payments, either the current account or the capital account. But I want to focus on the current account, which is the one where uh, most of the questions in economics come up for my students in A-level, and also it's the one which gets most of the reports on the news and so on, the current account. Well, the current account is made up of four components. It records money flows in the, as a result of the trade in goods. It, it records flows of money resulting from the trade in services. It records flows of money um, for profit and income. Now, this is money which, uh, I'm talking always from a British point of view here, so I'm looking at the balance of payments of Britain. This will be money coming back into Britain um, from, from British firms operating and making profit around the world, but it will also record flows of profit from non-British companies working in Britain, sending their profits out of Britain, back to their mother country. And it isn't just profits of businesses, it's also the income of workers. Some workers send their, their wages, or part of their wages, back to uh, another country. And finally, uh, a smaller item on here, current transfers, which is um, flows of money resulting from, um, not from trade, but uh, just little odds and ends, really. Things like payment of the EU fees and money being received from the EU, which show up here on the British balance of payments. Um, I don't mean EU businesses doing trade, I mean the EU, the European Union. Well, each of these um, parts, components of the current account uh, will have a positive and a minus number, positive and a negative number. Let's imagine we're dealing, and I'm going to make these numbers up, and I'm going to keep the numbers simple to work with, just for the purpose of our example. Let's imagine we're measuring this in uh, millions of pounds. And the trading goods will have both, both a positive number, which represents money Britain has earned, money we earn from selling exports of goods like scotch whisky, bottles of scotch whisky, leaving Britain and going all over the world, money coming back. So um, this would have an inflow. Let's say the inflow of the tra all the trading goods is 500 million. But there will also be an outflow as we buy goods and we spend British money uh, on, on, uh, in foreign economies as we buy goods um, and that's perhaps bigger, let's say that's 1,300. Same thing for the trade in services, there'll be an inflow as we sell services, let's say that that's 600, but there's an outflow as we buy services, let's imagine that that's 400. Profit and income, there's a credit as money flows back from British firms around the world. Let's imagine that's 700. And there's a debit as foreign firms in Britain send their money out back to the mother country. Let's imagine that's 600. And current transfers are usually smaller numbers. Let's imagine that we receive credit of 50 and debit money going out is, let's say, 80. Well, as you can see, each component here could be positive and it could be uh, negative. And generally for Britain, the trading goods comes out as negative. This is uh, 800 negative. You could put that in brackets if you want to be accountants. But let's just work like this, minus 800. Generally, the trading services for the UK is positive, but not big enough to cancel out the, the, the deficit in the trading goods, plus 200. Here, this is plus 100. Here, this is minus 30, and if we combine all of these, we see that minus 800 plus 200 is minus 600, minus 500, minus 530. That would indicate, again, I'm making the numbers up completely, but that would indicate that more money is flowing out of the UK than is flowing in. It would be a current account deficit, 
And indeed, the UK does have a current account deficit at the moment. And that's generally considered to be bad news uh, because it implies that we're not competitive and it implies that we must be borrowing money to finance our overspending. And now indeed, the other account, the capital account, must have a, a, a final uh, line of plus 530. This is the balance of the balance of payments. The current account and the capital account cancel each other out. So the capital account, the other account, which records flows of money to do with uh, saving and investment and borrowing, would show plus 530, 530 flowing into the UK, because we're borrowing money to finance our overspending. Um, we usually measure current account deficits in terms of percentage of GDP of the country. And um, the UK is, I think, is what currently about a 3-4% uh, deficit. That's overspending, 3-4% uh, or 4 of the British GDP. Whereas um, Japan has a surplus, uh, America has a, a deficit, although it's reduced slightly, it's still pretty big, I think 5-6%. Um, and Greece... Uh, where I am living, uh, has a deficit of something like 9, 10, 11 percent, so a very big deficit. So, um, it's possible that elements of the current account are in surplus, while the overall current account is in deficit. Sometimes we talk about the trading goods as visibles. Sometimes we talk about these as invisibles. Sometimes we talk about the... the the position of goods and services only, and whether that's in deficit or in surplus. Um, but this is the structure, broadly this is the structure of the current, of the balance of payments current account. Okay, thank you.